All right, good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz, Tribe and Trade Group, and it is Tuesday, the, what is today? The 25th, 25th of August. Only a few more days of August to go. Theme of the day, holy cow, back to growth. What an amazing turnaround from yesterday for the growth names where, you know, we saw value outperform a little bit. Uh, you know, it was one of those things in yesterday's video that I said, hey, baby, value outperforms for a couple of days. I'm kind of welcoming that a little bit. I talked about some of the trades that I put on yesterday and, um, you know, maybe, you know, getting a little bit more exposure to value, but not completely abandoning growth. Uh, I tend to like what Mr. Kramer, Jim Kramer, likes to say about this type of philosophy. Uh, and I, I agree with him. I don't always agree with everything that Jim Kramer says. And I know people have a lot of feelings, positive and negative, of course, on Jim, Jim Kramer. But one of the things that he's been saying is basically um, more or less to, to own quality, own a little bit of both, but you know, not to kind of jump into growth names, not to jump into value names, but really own names that you think are good quality names have some reasons behind them you know and that's kind of i know he's not uh you know a technical guy so to say uh or or a trend trader which is basically i'm doing but i agree with that too like i don't just pile into growth names or you know names that i think you know that have just basically gone down and and looking for them to reverse so um you know i had exposure we'll talk about you know some of the trades that um i had on today but Man, it was a it was one hell of a day, and it was one of those days too, where for the for the majority of the day, the market was essentially flat, and it was just on the right side of a lot of trades. You know, a lot of a lot of nice setups were materializing over the last couple of days, and um, and we hit some really nice ones. So, uh, you know, this has been a tremendous market to trade, and and I hope it continues. I don't know how long it does. Um, but we'll kind of continue to trade this market smartly and kind of and go from there. You know, I mean, one of the things that I say every day is that I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what stocks are going to do every day, but I basically know, know how to kind of trade this market, right? I mean, you know, looking for setups, trading breakouts out of consolidation and taking some profits here and there, you know, along the way, taking some money off the table, you know, and waiting for another, you know, little dip. And that's kind of what I'm doing now, you know, all they, although today, you know, continue to see, it's tough to, to take more money off the table when you're continuing to see some, some pretty good setups on the, on the tape. But you got to make sure that again, that you don't get over the tips of your skis with, with risk. Um, I don't know when a dip happens, but I'll be ready to kind of capitalize on it when it does. Let's let's talk about today's performance uh, really quick here. Q's finished up, uh, you know, so the Q's were the underperformer yesterday. I'll tell you what was so interesting about this too, because this is not what I was expecting for the day. Uh, but that's fine. You know, I can, I, I pay attention to, to the tape. You know, I read the tape in terms of option activity. The option activity lately, you know, there's been a lot of momentum in, in names, so you're you're able to spot this pretty quickly. Um, but um, you know, the 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 queues finished up. They they were even selling off going into the open. So that's what was so remarkable. And IWM was doing the opposite. The small caps were up like about one percent. Uh, you know, going into the open and they gave it all back. Um, now they did rebound from the close, but uh, by the way, there's, there's not much to really uh, to analyze in the S&P chart. If there's not much for us to analyze, we kind of move on. We know that the trend is up. We're above all short-term moving averages, right? I had a lot of questions about that yesterday, you know, just to kind of revisit yesterday's recap. You know, I had some questions in the, in the member Q&A about buying puts, right? Well, here's an example of like, you know, there's, there, like I've been saying, there's no sell signal in the market right now. We'll eventually get one, but we just, right now, we, we just don't have one. So you have to be careful about anticipating things that are not there. Um, let me just go over just quickly, because I, th I thought this was interesting. Um, that I, IWM, here it is, up what, like, I don't think it was up 1%, maybe about 70, 80 basis points, close to 1%. And then it sold off all the way through to about 1140. So again, I'm chuckling because, I, you know, it's just crazy how this small cap, uh, these small caps function. And then it's so odd to me, right? Why would you sell them all the way off and then they recover for the, for the you know, after 1130 this morning to only finish down, you know, they finished positive for the day, but down from the open. But, uh, you know, just kind of crazy move. And then this was the cues. 
you know, if you don't believe me, the Qs this morning looked weak going into the open, and they did the opposite. Um, they rallied basically all through the session. Uh, they kind of came in a little bit between 11.20 and like 12 o'clock and then basically grinded higher for the rest of the uh, session. A couple names that reported after the, after the close – Salesforce, uh, unbelievable numbers. They're up to 241. Um, this is surprising to me. I did not trade Salesforce um, because I basically stick with the earnings. I thought Salesforce, what Salesforce usually does is they have good numbers and then the price is kind of, you know, very, um, you know, ho-hum basically, uh, you know, after they report, they usually go down a couple percent. You could see the last three quarters. So they, this, this has not had good earnings, but again, the past isn't as always, you know, going to repeat exactly, right? There's going to be things that are, that are different, a little bit different from time to time, but, you know, really nice move in this one. Um, a couple other ones that reported, Toll Brothers, interesting, um, Toll Brothers did see what appeared to be call buying um, today into the um, into the number, and they're up to 47. Toll Brothers usually doesn't move that much. I would be careful of this name going. I think the conference call is tomorrow, and sometimes the CFO, CEO kind of sandbag the next quarter. So, you know, keep in mind, if you're trading options, right, If you're like if you're outright long calls or if the other way puts, you could always do some hedging after hours. It always blows my mind to hear that, that traders don't know how to do this. This should be 101 options. If you're long calls, right, and figure out what the delta is of the calls and figure out what your equivalent position is in the shares. And then you can, if a name is up big, so for example, maybe not Toll Brothers is such a big case for this, but if you were, if you were long, let's say the 224 calls or something like that in Salesforce, there's no excuse why you're not locking in some profits by selling a little bit of shares versus the, that long delta that you have and the options and if you don't know what I'm talking about you should not be trading options <laughs> because this is 101 about how you make money in the after hours market all right selling some stock versus your calls you could look up what's beautiful nowadays is is if you don't know any of these topics all you have to do is basically google and read for about five or ten minutes but Google Delta hedging versus, you know, versus options. And you'll be, you should be able to figure it out within five minutes. Um, it's not a hard thing to do, but you should always know what your Delta is, right? How sensitive the option price is to the stock price. And you could do some of these things after hours because we know sometimes when they start the conference call, not always, but if the, if this, if the CEO or the CFO says something negative about their quarter, uh, you know, the stock can sometimes come in a little bit. So you lock some in by sound, by doing some adjustments in the after hours market. So just important. I always try to tell traders, especially newer traders, make sure you do a, like, you know, not even, you don't have to spend five hours of education, like literally 15 minutes to a half hour. And you, you're going to, you're going to be in such a better place. All right. So, so moving on, we'll talk a little bit more about today's price action. Uh, let me bring up the uh, spreadsheet that I had just to kind of go over. So Chinese internets were, this, were the story today. They were up 1.7%. They rallied pretty hard from the open. Well, they weren't the only story, but I've long a few of them, so it was really nice for me. The solar names actually were your ber best performing group, and we actually went long a couple of those names. Um, you could see the setup that I put on, on ENPH. By the way, if you're, if you're not a member of Tribeca Trade Group and you're watching some of the charts that I put out, on Twitter. Keep in mind, there's a lot more detail behind what I'm doing in the trading room, right? So don't be afraid to say, I, some, somebody the other day, well, maybe it was a couple of weeks ago, they're like, hey, you put a chart on and you know, this, you know, what happened to this? Well, I go over everything in the trading room. I can't put everything, you know, on Twitter um, for you, but the, you know, I try to put on Twitter just some examples of what I'm doing in the trading room. It's very much a thin layer of, of what we're doing in the trading room. So, you know, some of the things, for example, you know, Starbucks was a trade that I put on um, yesterday, you know, was able to take a lot of profits in this. I know this, this got like pumped on CNBC today, but um, yes, there was some call activity. But this was one of the, this is an example of what I started to say in the beginning of the video, talking about owning quality, right? So when we see a rotation into some things, you know, more of the, maybe not value, but more of the reopening trade, like this is something in particular 
that Starbucks, which I think is a quality name, it just has been in, in a situ in a bad situation. Um, so nice move here. Ultimately, I think Starbucks can get up to eighty six fifty five in Starbucks. Um, I did close my trade. You know, I for one day I got a real nice gainer on it, and sometimes you know I basically do that. Um, you could see on the open I was a little bit of a seller again. Um, I put on this ENPH trade, so two trades in solar today. I just thought solar was a little bit quiet. Um, so I took one target because on the shorter time frame, I got what I was looking for, basically a move from 73 to 76. Now I'm messing with the profits and we'll see if this um, ENPH can take that next leg higher. Also run was a nice setup that was talked about. We got this one on the dip today. It did actually close lower, but I think this run is breaking out. So pretty strong. My other favorite name in this group is SEDG, um, which is also trying to turn the corner. First Solar is one that I haven't traded in a while, but has actually been showing some momentum here. This one finished up 1.1% for the day. And then um, I think SPWR is an another Solar name, which again, I don't trade this one too much, but had a really, I did look at this one, but up 9%. So seems to be the, was the leader of the bunch today. Really, really strong there. And I'm also along this solar, this tan ETF, the solar ETF. So this thing has been un unbelievable. Uh, this this thing's been in the tactical portfolio, and I've been holding this now for what over a year, I think at this point. So really, really nice. Keep in mind another thing, right? So we have two. I I manage two portfolios. I manage my trading account, and I manage my what's called a tech a tactical trend portfolio. So many traders, I think I've talked about this concept before, but I'm just going to talk about it for about quick 30 seconds. So many traders on Twitter, FinTwit, they're, they're always looking for like where you can take a target. Oh, oh my God, it's breaking out. Where, where, where am I going to, where, you know, where should I take this thing off? Just it, some of these will, will can, not all, but some of these will continue to trend. You know, keep, put this in the right frame of reference that you want to catch the heart of the movement is the trend right if you if you succumb to the fact that you're not going to catch that you're that you're not going to be able to time we talked about this in yesterday's video by the way that you're not going to be able to time the actual top and that you may give some back but you're capturing this whole move i think you get a little bit more excited we talked about this um in yesterday's q a session with baba um you know people were taking profits in baba on the first candle of a breakout you got to let these things go a little bit right once a name breaks out like i hear people talking about you know oh where's the resistance in this thing there is no resistance it broke out <laughs> so let it like that's the best thing that could happen if you're in a name breaking out it's it's now think of it as like open road right you're you're in traffic and then all of a sudden you have open road right so not saying that every name is going to break out and go and shoot shoot to the highs like baba but you know the best thing i you know one of the techniques that we've been going over a lot in the trading room that i've been trying to stress if you trade options roll them out and up right it's an easy way to basically you know take some money off the table and mess with the profit so i've gone over that in like probably two or three of these videos the last couple of days but it's the it's one of the best ways that i know how to play options to keep your money up basically on the table but you're but you're taking the profits off the table right and if it continues to trend you've got something really good going on um facebook this is my screw up for the day i got into calls this is one of the first ones that i got into and i just saw some better opportunities and i'm just you know being careful about <laughs> literally five minutes after i took this thing off you know there was some news out on the tape and um this thing took off. I decided to substitute into Microsoft. You know, I thought Microsoft um, could possibly, and I still think Microsoft could break out here. So again, it's a little bit crowded right now, but if it breaks out, it's got open road. That's where things really get exciting. So um, I think again, I'll, I'll say it again, newer traders struggle with this. Like they're looking for resistance. They're looking to take the trade off. Um, yes, taking profits is important. But, you know, maybe this thing can run to 229, right? And we talked about this with Baba yesterday. So, you know, I keep rolling, 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 rolling. Um, this Baba trade, I've rolled three times. So um, I decided to 
that said, like after rolling this about three or four times, I did take some money off the table in BABA and I'm now into, um, it, which I have been in the Chinese internet ETF and I rolled out of September to October. I got a question about this. Why are you rolling it out of September and, and into October? Well, because we know at this point, September is front month and that's where you have the biggest theta decay. Again, another important concept in options. Um, I'm going over this a little bit more in detail about important concepts to know, like delta hedging, like theta decay, because I think there's a lot of newer traders at this point that are using options that ha that haven't spent just, you know, again, like I said, you don't have to spend five hours, literally like a half hour to an hour, just to understand just a few basic concepts of what you're doing, <laughs> like theta decay and delta hedging. Very important stuff. Also implied volatility. We were going over this um, workhorse, which is seeing all kinds of call activity, right? It's, it's an $18 stock. The options are super expensive. So why are the options so expensive? Because because it's a very high volatile name. That's one of the components of option pricing. So you don't have to necessarily uh, memorize the Black-Scholes formula, but you should know what some of the components that go into the premium price, one of which is implied volatility, right? So you could day trade this stuff around, but the, 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 if you go out to like the September options, the implied volatility is about 130, 140%. So it's about six times as, as more volatile as SPY is, as the, as the S&P is. So why even mess with an option that has an implied volatility of 130%, right? When you could just buy stock, you completely take it out of the equation. Right. I know everybody likes to kind of you know mess around with with momentum names and options and it's fun but th so that's for day trading it's not that big of a deal if you're swing trading and the market maker takes the implied volatility and moves it which is basically out of your control if they move it from 130 to like 80 percent your your the premium will go down right even though the stock isn't going down Again, a very easy concept to basically know, but you need to know what you should be looking at the implied volatility of an option and knowing if it's, you know, how expensive it is to, to versus SPY. Very, very easy concept. Um, all right, so what else did pretty well? Of course, the clean energy. Biotech actually had a decent day, right? We've been talking about how that hasn't fit in this whole bull market context. You know, maybe this starts to come back a little bit. We'll keep an eye on biotech. Some things like I was watching for, for some bargaining, for bargains here. Um, VRTX is one name that I'm watching. I didn't pull the trigger on it yet. I want to see this thing get above 272-ish. Um, all right, so that's uh, that's something that's on my radar. You know, maybe looking for some names that I've gotten a little bit beaten up in um, in the biotech space. Um, so we talked about Baba, we talked about Microsoft. Um, took a target in that one. Um, Facebook again. I'll I'll have to revisit Facebook, but man, I was right on it today. I've been trading in and out of Facebook the last few days. Perhaps I should have just sat in the name. You know, talking about b being a little bit more patient. Starbucks worked out well. Um, Autodesk trade idea did, did not work for earnings, right? That was a name that I was playing into earnings, and it looks like um, their guidance was a little bit weaker than expected. Um, Home Depot, I took that trade off as well today, uh, but Baba was a huge winner for me, so I did get that target in ENPH. Um, what else did I want to? Do? What else did I want to go over for for the day? Amazon, I hit a target in that one. Fastly looks pretty interesting here. Right, um, it is above value. A um, lot of call buying, right, that we've seen in Fastly for nice day trades. The stock was up huge today, up seven percent. Um, but of course, like I, you know, I've owned Fastly now, and I'm holding on to a position, and I'm looking for that breakout of value. So it's very close. I would keep an eye on this thing. Uh, speaking of a volatile name, Fastly is definitely one of those names. Um, SE, so one of my favorite setups right now, uh, because you know this name continues to kind of you know, work higher in an uptrend, consolidating a little bit after an earnings gap. And it looks like it's trying to move higher here a bit. So I did take a position on the break of value or, or right before it broke out of value here. I did not add to it. 
uh, but I'm going to sit with this position. Again, I like to get in some names before we see the call activity, right? Once a name starts to see a little bit of volume and a little bit of momentum, then the call buyers come out of the woodwork, right? And then it really catches that momentum. So I like to spot these things before you see the call activity. Trust me, it works out sometimes. sometimes. Um, and by the way, this video is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. Um, also, just a few other stocks to talk about. AMD, this is a nice one. Uh, moving higher. Oh, I didn't talk about the weekend watch list yet. Um, and then pins is another one that saw a big roll of calls yesterday, right? They they um, are managing a trade here, and um, you know, kind of tricky little candle yesterday. And we'll see if this has some follow through, right? It's it needs to get it need so easy level to watch. Notice how I'm going back and forth between the daily and the one hour charts. The one hour charts you get a lot of signals from and a lot of information from, but this thing has got to stay above 34. So that's a name to watch tomorrow. Um, yes. Yeah, so the weekly watch list. Um, how about that, right? So up 2.1%. Uh, if you're not familiar with, with what we started to do with this, remember I talk about having skin in the game, right? And not talking about, you know, just, you know, hypothetically saying, oh, this stock could go from this price to this price on Twitter, right? We're different. We actually do the, we we trade, right? And that's the, that's the whole thing. We're not here to, to quote hypothetical and do magic tricks on uh, Twitter, right? So um, this is, this is a, um, watch list that I, I put to work every Monday morning uh, because it's been outperforming SPY for like the last five or six weeks. So it is now outperforming again, right? Alibaba's in this NTES. So I do go ahead and buy this through a system called M1 Finance. Um, what I'm basically doing to cover the Friday to Monday gap ups, which we've seen, you know, for the last few weeks is I buy some SPY on Friday and I get out of the current weekly watch lists and, and then what I do on Monday morning is I sell out of the SPY and go into the watch list. So, you know, these are some of the names. Honeywell up 4.4%. Facebook is in this. So I did, I do own this. You know, I was um, crying a little bit because of the option position that I got out of a little bit early. But I do own Facebook here. And um, NTES, which you, you don't hear too many people talking about, also up 6% in the last two days. So this is working pretty well. I've got a couple stinkers in here. But basically, we, we equally weight this. Um, I put a couple names at a higher weight, but um, but it, again, it's 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 very close to being equally weighted for this one. All right. So um, if you're not a member of Tribeca Trade Group, remember I do the homework you know for you on the weekend, and um, you know it's a challenge to me to come in and outperform the the the, the week. Um, you know, putting this list together on Sunday. But um, I've been managing to do it. So um, you could go here. You could click here to be a member and um, and get involved and, and, and check out. And, I, you know, I don't even talk about, I, sometimes I forget about the community of traders. We've got such a tremendous community of traders. Um, you know, and it's one of the things that when, when I get a new trader in, in the room, you know, or a few new traders in the room, um, you know, I make sure that everybody is on the same wavelength, you know, in terms of we're all here to help one another. We're all here to number one goal is to make money and to be respectful of other traders and help each other out with trade ideas and trade setups. All right, guys, have a great night. See you tomorrow.